Video 1 on semiconductors. Let's look at the syllabus. We'll start with the second column and we'll go to the bottom of it. So you need to know about conduction in semiconductors. You need to know the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic conduction. And you need to know what P and N type semiconductors are. There's not a whole lot there. And the textbook goes into much more detail than is required by the syllabus. But then as physics students, you follow the syllabus rather than the textbook. So the textbook will flesh out your understanding. But this is exactly what you need to know. Now, you also need to have an idea about the V and I graphs, so voltage and current graph for the semiconductor, so that's related to the mandatory experiment. We'll cover, this, we'll cover that in this sequence of videos also. And you also need to know about some applications of semiconductors. That's in the final column at the end. Electronic devices are applications, uh, LEDs, computers, and integrated circuits. <clears throat> so let's start with intrinsic conduction. This slide defines what intrinsic conduction is. It's conduction in a pure semiconductor. And then how conduction varies in a pure semiconductor is if we add energy to the pure semiconductor, the conduction increases. So you need to understand that. And you also need to know that by adding energy, we're creating more charge carriers. So we're creating more electrons that are free to roam throughout the material and more holes that are free to roam throughout the material. That slide sums up this section and this video. Let's get into more detail. So we've got our silicon here. All of the atoms are um, involved in a covalent bond. So it's a stable substance, but not so stable that we can't interrupt those bonds by adding heat to the substance. So let's add heat to the atom. And what happens is the heat is received by the electrons. And if you add enough heat, then electrons can break the current bonds and they'll be available for conduction like so and you can read the left there as you as you want okay <clears throat> so we keep going so we've seen that in silicon heat is re uh, releases electrons from the bond this creates an electron hole pair so when the electron is removed it leaves behind a gap or a position where the electron previously was we call that a hole and what can happen is nearby electrons can fill that hole and as a result, it appears that the hole is uh, moving. So as a result, we have holes that can move throughout the substance. We have electrons that can move throughout the substance. Both are charge carriers. So as a result, we've increased the number of charge carriers in the substance and hence increased the conductivity. So we add heat to it. We get an electron hole pair there. Add more heat to it. Create another electron hole pair. So we're increasing the conductivity because we have more charge carriers available. And we can re repeat this as much as possible to increase the conductivity. Okay, so let's apply a potential difference across it now and we'll see what happens. And remember a potential difference is just connect the semiconductor to the positive of let's say a power pack or a battery and the other side to the negative of a power pack or battery. All right, that sets up what's called an electric field which is the direction that charged particles will flow in the presence of it being connected to the battery. And if we apply heat to it, uh, electron hole pairs are created and the electrons being negatively charged will travel to the, uh, to the left, so travel to the positive uh, terminal. There should be an animation here, but unfortunately it's not working. The positive holes then are created, which you can't view here either because the animation is broken, will then travel to the right. So the charged particles will travel to the oppositely charged plate uh, due to the presence of that electric field. Okay, so the electrons feel a force and move in the electric field and we get an attraction there. If we apply heat, more charge uh, carriers are created, more electrons break fee free and they move in the electron electric field then as well. Okay, as a result, greater current than before and therefore, if there's greater current, it means the silicon has less resistance. So what's really important to remember here <clears throat> is the more heat you apply, the more current that flows. And as a result, the less resistance that substance uh, is experiencing. So this silicon is acting as what we call a thermistor. And a thermistor is a thermal resistor, a substance whose resistance decreases sharply with increasing temperature. There we go. Okay, that's the end of video one.